What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Ball Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Combiner Wars Computron. Let's open up this box and take a look. This is how the set comes packaged, all in vehicle mode with the different components for combination. The figure set also comes with a nice little collector card here, which is very nice. It also comes with this giant poster that is the exact same picture as what's on the box and on the collector card. And it also comes with a large set of directions for each one of the figure's transformations. Out of the box, the Technobots look really cool. Scattershot does come with his giant gun, the same as his the original Scattershot from Combiner Wars. We're going to take a quick look at all of these figures up close right now. Up close, Lightspeed looks pretty good, except for the weird red paint oddity that we've got going on here. So the red paint on the front of the car and the back of the car is the same, but in the middle on the doors, it's different. And on the well, emergency lights, it's different. He comes with the same gun that everyone in this mold comes with, the triple shotgun. Overall, it's a very good looking mode and works well. The paint is pretty good, except for this blemish right here that rubs off pretty easily with my finger. I would have liked to have seen some black on the windows though. Lightspeed's transformation is exactly the same as all of the other figures that have this mold. Nothing different here. We've seen this transformation about, I want to say, eight times already. I could be wrong on that number, but that sounds about right. I mean, this is probably one of the most retooled figures in the line. I think every combiner that has a car has this mold in it. In robot mode, Lightspeed looks pretty darn good, except for the fact that I forgot to turn his hips around. His chest and head sculpt are also good, but I swear the original G1 figure had a full face plate. I could be misremembering that. Overall, looks pretty good. I would have preferred a little bit more white as opposed to the gray, but oh well. Next up is Nosecone, who is a retool of Brawl from the Combaticons. And this is the strangest drill tank I have ever seen. The way it attaches is you flip up this peg and pull off the drill. It looks kind of like a drill gun here. So it actually works pretty well. Kind of reminds me of the Thunderbirds for some reason. Transformation is exactly the same as Brawls. We'll start off with by just lifting up the front and then just folding out all the components. It's not hard. It's it feels better than the original Brawl mold does, so that's something. But you can screw it up just like you can with the original Brawl mold. I don't know. I, I'm of two minds of whether it's a good idea to reuse this mold or not. Nose cone looks pretty good in brown, yellow, and silver. I actually really like this color combination. Oh, and the maroon too. It works incredibly well. The redeco of Brawl's head works pretty well. It just, the yellow is kind of, I'm not sure how to describe it. It didn't fill in completely on the head. It's a little bit odd. You also have the nose cone sticking off the back there, which can be hand carried in use. Next up is Afterburner, who is a remold of the original Groove figure that we just got here in the US. In fact, a lot of folks still haven't gotten a hold of it yet. The coloring works well, even though the orange here on the front of the vehicle mode is different from the orange on the rest of the vehicle mode. Uh, oh well. Overall, it looks pretty good, though I would have liked a more futuristic bike. That's just a personal preference. I don't think this is a bad bike at all. I would just rather had something a bit more futuristic, because that's what the Technobots were all about. They were these futuristic, crazy vehicles that really would not have worked in real life, but they were fun anyway. Transformation is exactly the same. Just grabbing the bits and unfolding him out. And then, uh, come on, flipping the head around, folding up the backpack, and then twisting the legs around and you're done. The coloring for the robot mode works really well on Afterburner, and overall, it's a pleasant robot mode. Plus, it's the first robot mode that we have with light piping. Big complaint in the robot mode, though, what the heck is going on with his backpack? I mean, look at that. That's ridiculous. Come on, Hasbro. You could do better than that. I mean, put another hinge in there or something. 
And as I said, he's got light piping. Up next is Strafe, who is a heavy retool of one of the jets from the original Combiner Wars Aerialbot set. It works incredibly well. I like this a lot. It's not exactly what Strafe was, but it works very, very nicely. Unfortunately, you can still see the robot head there. These guns, however, do not detach, which I think is my only real complaint. I would have liked them to be able to detach oh well. Transformation is exactly the same as all the other jets. Open up the back to fold out the knees and then flip them closed and make sure that they are actually covering the correct sections. Flip up the arms, fold down the backpack and fold it up, flip around the head. And then in this case, we're going to close up the wings along the side of the legs. Robot mold detailing is incredibly good, though you can't fold the wings in front of the legs. You have to fold them into the back of the legs. Not a big deal. Overall, the figure looks well, looks well painted and works. I really do think the head sculpt is cool, and I love the giant weapons on his backpack. Unfortunately, the figure does not have light piping. So far, Afterburner is the only figure in the set with light piping. Up next is Scattershot, who is a vastly better painted figure this time around. I have already reviewed this mold I don't know how many times. I think this is the fourth, maybe fifth figure. Let's see, there was the original original um, Silverbolt, Scattershot, Cyclonus. Okay, this is the fourth, and Scattershot 2.0. Much, much better paint. To give you guys an idea on the difference in paint, here is the original Combiner Wars version versus the new Combiner Wars version. As you can see, the one here on the right is much more akin to the original paint scheme. The biggest difference, however, being the nose cone. Now, in the original figure, back in the G1 era, there was a big white nose cone and a silver cannon in the front. The original release is much more accurate to that original design while i like the new one better i just i like the new one better i think the better coloring works a lot better now the original one had a big gray gun the new one has this big lavender colored gun at least i think this is lavender well maybe not lavender it's more of a pinkish purple but i think it works well i like it scattershot's transformation remains exactly the same fold up or fold down the gun, flip up the nose cone, unpeg the wings, and just kind of get them out of the way, and then just go ahead and start unfolding the figure. It works, well, exactly the same as the original, or the other versions of this mold transform. Everything's tight. There's not a loose joint on this guy, which I am pleasantly surprised with. I thought that all of these Combiner Wars figures at this point would just get become floppy messes, but thankfully they have not, so that is definitely something good. This version of Scattershot is much, much more colorful than the version we got previously, and I like that a whole bunch. It definitely feels more premium, even if the colors aren't exactly accurate. Plus that head sculpt is, well, it's just painted better. It's just painted better. Now, here we have this guy versus this guy, and you can see that the powder blue on the original just doesn't really work. The coloring is roughly the same, but they're much darker, much more vibrant hues on the new Combiner Wars version than the old. Yes, there are some spots that the old one has painted that the new one doesn't, specifically the kneecaps. I'm okay with that. Last up, we have Scrounge and Cybax. Scrounge is a redo of Legends Cosmos, or I should say a repaint with a slight remold of a head, and bright yellow UFO. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. He's a bright freaking yellow UFO. I don't think the color scheme works all that well for Cosmos, but oh well. <laughs> In their robot moons, they are definitely yellow. Now, Scrounge is actually based off of a Marvel G1 character who, well, died. He transformed into this little disc that rolled around, and he was a friend of Blaster's. He originally found the location of the Ark in the Badlands or in Dead End in the original G1 comics. Can't remember. And, well, this little dude turns into a 
little gun that is, well, that's it. It's yellow. It's a double barrel shotgun. That's what he transforms into. He can be wielded by any of the Autobots, especially Scrounge. I do like the original G1 throwback, though. One last thing before we get onto the combination. These two guys are meant to combine thusly. You just plug the shuttle into the tip of the UFO and it becomes this weird little combined mode. This will then be used, or this entire setup will then be used as a shield or a shoulder mounted shield in the combined mode. Overall, I think the set looks pretty cool, though I am not thrilled with the reuse over and over and over of the same guys. Even though they've been reused multiple times at this point, I think the paint on all of these guys works really well, especially, especially the Brawl redo. And then there's Scattershot, who works really well, and Strafe look very good. I find it a little bit odd, though, that none of them have light piping, except for our friend Roadbust. Roadbuster? Afterburner. Jeez, I'm going crazy. I'm starting to forget names again. Okay, so let's go ahead and get them combined. First, we're going to start off with the legs and grab some feet. Now, the feet are interesting. These are not your normal Combiner Wars feet. These are different with articulation and fists sticking out of the bottom. So first, pull out the fists, which is a little bit easier said than done sometimes, and just kind of plop them on the floor. And, and then we will get the figures ready. To start off with, we will grab light speed. First, pop the, well, front windscreen, pop the front off, and then flip the entire section around, and then just plop him on a foot like that oh and don't forget to flip up the combiner port that's kind of important and then for nose cone we will take the nose cone flip it up take the entire rear section and flip that up as well unpeg the nose cone and plop it up here up front so it can then act as a drill tank up front though that doesn't exactly work all that well so you just kind of have to well, I hate to say it, but you have to use some force to get it into place. And then, take this whole thing and make sure that it lines up okay. Yep, and plop that down into place as well. Hopefully it doesn't collapse like that. And then flip up the combiner port. Whoops, I screwed up. So we have to take nose cone, unpeg him, and then flip the legs around back, and then peg it in there. Next up are Strafe and Afterburner. We'll start with Strafe first. Combine the legs. Next, take these arms and these wings in the back. Fold the wings all the way back. Take the arms, turn them 180 degrees, fold them back, and they will peg into these little wings that we just flipped out or flipped up. So like that, turn the head 180 degrees and push the head into the body, exposing the combiner port, and then grab the right fist and plug it into the bottom of the feet and that's all we do that's it Oop, we can turn it so that the figure has some more articulation like that and we're done next up is afterburner turn the head 180 degrees push it down into the body like that fold that up take the arms and turn them 180 degrees fold up the kickstand which i neglected to do Combine the legs again, like that. Make sure they snap into place. Oh, and we have to make sure that the wheels snap together as well. Or we could just turn them out to the side like that. Now with just about everything done, we can fold the arms, or shoulders down, I should say. Well, you get the idea. It just kind of folds down in a way like that. And one thing I did, I mixed up the arms with the fists, so strafe is actually supposed to be the right arm. And the way the, well, combined yellow shield attaches is there appears to be a peg hole on the bottom there, and that just pegs in right on top of strafe, like so. Finally, for Scattershot, we're going to take his arms, point them straight over his head. First, we have to collapse his head into his body, like this like that, turn the arms, and then the fists will flip out for the combiner ports. And here we've got the legs, 
Then reach into the crotch and unpeg the entire section here. Fold that up, fold the feet in, and then the these panels will flip out to form the chest of the combined mode. And fold them down, fold these sections down like this, flip up the combiner head and peg it into place, and then close the chest up right before we flip up the tummy flap. And here we have Computron! Computron looks absolutely fantastic and all the coloring works very very well and he holds together pretty well except and this is a big problem he is incredibly floppy i don't know what is going on but the connectors and the and the ratchets here in the hips are very very floppy thankfully though he looks fantastic and it looks so much better than that stupid Betatron. Ugh. Overall, it's a very, very nice set. And the new feet and new hands work really well. I love the look of the hands. They don't have much in terms of functionality, but what do you really need? The new ankles, however, are fantastic and hold together exceptionally well. We do have leftover guns from the other bot modes. I guess he could hold the... Hold them together, or you could peg them in in different places. Ah, eh, whatever, just put them off to the side. Overall, Computron works very, very well and looks very, very good. But that hip issue, I, I'm really worried about that hip issue. I'm very happy I got this set, and I believe it's actually on sale on Amazon right now. You could get this set and a bunch of other sets over on Amazon for ridiculously cheap. Like... A hundred dollar set is only 30 bucks. So I would definitely run over to Amazon to pick that up. I got this set over at BigBadToyStore.com. I'm really glad I did. I like it a lot. Little worried about the hips, as I said, but I think with a little bit of tweaking, I can use the original scatter shot as the torso, as opposed to this scatter shot whose arms seem to be a little bit jiggly. Oh well. So gang, I hope you have enjoyed this video review of the Computron gift set from Combiner Wars. As always, I am Bolt Matrix. I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. And as I said, I think you should pick this set up.